Wow. So here we are in Fremont, the east part. And um, I need to head to the art district to, um, honestly, this is a selfish need that I need to go to the art district. And I'm gonna keep it a surprise just for the video. But I think we're gonna take a bike, I'm not sure. I'm gonna see if they have an electric one before I decide, but we'll see. Oh. But uh, nope, no electric ones. They are all, they are all just regular bikes. Which I'm getting a little old for, my knees hurt. So instead of using a bike, I guess we're just gonna have to walk a little ways. But, oh well, let's do it. So we are going to the sanctuary, Nevada, and it's going to be hot today. Yes, I'm wearing black. And yes, I am going to wear black for the rest of this year until further notice. So anyways, I got my Slurpee. I'm good. But yeah, so it should be pretty interesting just to you know, check out the inventory of the sanctuary. And, um, you know, cannabis is wonderful. Period. And, um, honestly, I don't think this, this, um, city would have been stable enough to manage over the 20, year 2020 because I, I don't think they would have sustained if they didn't have as many dispensaries as they do have. I swear they have the most dispensaries in, in the country so far. But we are going to the dispensary. So yesterday, was it yesterday? I think it was the day before. But the day before, you know, basically, I was being pushed to react to somebody's negative, um, crappy behavior. And I didn't respond in the way the person thought, didn't, you know, the way the person thought I would. The way that I responded, was I was at it from a scale of one to ten I was about an eight with volume but my voice was so clear but this lady lets her cats run around in the parking lot with no leash now I know what you're thinking what cat on the world is being walked outside on a leash I know but there's apparently people who walk a cat off a leash too especially in a neighborhood full of dogs at the actual dog park. So she was out walking that cat, and I guess one of her inside cats got out. I think it was running from her, but it got out and basically um, hung out on, this, on my floor of my apartment to you know, hang out, smell my plant, like just look it out, whatever. It went down the, down the walkway a little bit, but then it came back and walked basically in my apartment. So I'm like, okay. So I, you know, bypass the cab, peek, peek, peek my head out the window, and I yell her name extremely loud to the point where I, I didn't knew I didn't have to. I, I knew I wouldn't have to say it again. Her name, yell it. So she's looking at me confused because a, she's a very very scared person. Um, she's out of her element and she's weak-minded. Let's keep it real. So, her fucking cat literally fucking wants to come in my apartment. I call her, go grab the cat, put it outside, and she's coming up the stairs and the cat is still trying to get inside my apartment. It knows where it is because it walked down the stairs and sat there cool, like a normal cat. You know, it wasn't until she started, I called her name and she started coming over that the cat started getting nervous. She started coming up the stairs and the cat ran inside my house. I grabbed the cat, pulled it out, and it's still trying to get past my legs to get inside my apartment. I mean, it's, it's like whatever. But in my eyes, I see it as the cat's not wanting to be around her. And honestly, it may sound petty, but every time she goes out to walk that black cat, the, the one that goes outside to pee, when she walks that cat, uh, it, she lets it roam down the stairs and sniff along whoever's apartment wants she wants to antagonize but when she comes back uh 
when she comes back up, she has to carry the cat up because they won't come back. She's a horrible, horrible animal, animal uh, owner. So that was that was that uh, confrontation. It wasn't even a confrontation. She like, literally threatened to call the cops on me because she felt threatened. She said I threatened her cat, when in reality, I've seen two people almost die right there in front of my apartment. If you continue to walk your cat off the leash, your cat will die. Call it a threat if you want. So, you know, it was like that. So, you know, I don't have time for people who are, who are to really have the mind of a four-year-old. I don't have time. I do not have time. So, so that was that. place called the Jolt. I don't know if you can see it. The sun's right there on the top of it, but I guess it's a um, rainbow friendly coffee shop rec center. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know why they feel like they have to go to their own thing. Like, <laughs> they want to be treated equal, but yet they have to keep fucking wire fence, braided wire fence around their, their establishment. It's so weird. If you really want to be treated equally, fucking put break down the fucking barriers. That's what it means to be treated equally. Everybody has their bar barriers down at the same time, all the time. So, so, you know, nobody really truly understands what the human divide truly means. It's bad. It's, a, it's bad news. When a human is divided from itself or another, man, it's, it gets really sick. It gets sick. I mean... I would easily stay divided from the world and keep cool. But the moment that I separate from myself and I can't stop it, man, that, I remember, you know, I remember a little bit of those days, not many. I was always a little bit self-aware, but when it did happen, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was definitely working on its own accord. I wish I had a gimbal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Anybody want a pair of these glasses? I'm the guy to talk to. Just holler at me, and um, honestly, we'll curate something for you. Doesn't have to be red or black. Um, that's just my style. But um, it's really. Um, I think it's about 12. 12 to 15 colors, different colors, different frames. There might be, not be too much of a difference. Like one of them might be gold and pink, the other might be silver and pink, Some, something like that, you know, like, but you know, there's, there's a few to choose from. It's not just red and black. <clears throat> so, man, I think it was a mistake to walk. <laughs> it's so hot already. <laughs> it's so hot. It's not even 80 degrees yet, and then my back is sweating. All right. So where are we going? So I didn't want to actually put it on camera, but you might be able to see the silhouette of the people back there in the corner. There it is. So one guy was literally cursing out the other guy. Two white guys, two older white guys. Literally. <laughs> I think I might be able to start hashtag stop white hate. <laughs> Yo, I've never seen freaking two white people go at it on that level before. Like, he, he called him a cracker. He's like, you stupid fucking cracker. Holy crap. Holy crap. And I, I don't know, man. Like, I guess they thought I wasn't going to walk right by them. But I glanced at him and he called him a wince. <laughs> then I, I smiled at him really hard. And then that's when he broke out the cracker thing. Oh, that was funny. That was funny. I wish, I wish they weren't drunk because then I would have pulled out the camera. <laughs> I'm not ready for a drunk bum video. So, well, one of them might have been homeless. The other one, cursed, getting, the one getting cursed out was homeless. The other one, I don't think he was. He said he paid six hundred dollars for rent. I'm like, shit, man. <laughs> Let me know where your apartment is. I'm almost at nine now. It's ridiculous. 
I think we should freaking pay digital rent and real life rent because honestly, there's two different fucking worlds. It's two different worlds. So why do we have to pay fully in this world when we spend most of our time face to face with this fucking phone? You know what I mean? It's like, well, I think me personally, well, unless I'm walking or just doing my own thing, if I'm actually on the phone, I'm on the phone. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I'm not here. So it seems like there should be some sort of like paying the phone bill and paying for internet is the fucking rent, you know, for the digital world. And however long we live in that, it takes away from the real life rent. So it's, it's shit. I don't know, man. It's just an idea. You know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm too early with that thought. Like a lot of thoughts I have. Way too early. But it's always good to get the blood pumping. Feel the fresh air. Run thoughts through your head so you can clear your thoughts. Make space. Organize. And then execute after it's over. So I'm going to be starting a uh, YouTube show. Um, I'm not really an entertaining person if you've been following at all, but I am pretty creative and my sense of humor does spark up at it, you know, eventually. <laughs> um, but uh, so far, it's, it's definitely going to be an interview show. Um, and I'm going to interview small business owners, but we're going to be doing something. I'm going to keep that a surprise. But we're going to be doing something a little bit different. And uh, we are going to uh, try to find a video guy to at least kind of get the really good equipment to make this happen. Because I, I don't have the equipment, period. If I had the equipment, I'd probably be able to do everything on my own. But I just don't have the equipment. And honestly, like I said, living in... Las Vegas, you got to get lucky to get something under 800. And especially being close to downtown like I am, I think I'm pretty good still being, you know, still within range of okay of being this close to downtown. So, you know, I just, living is nothing I have to worry about anymore. I mean, I've been behind for, been behind on my rent for like two years because my wallet went to another state and I didn't know and it went the week that I had to pay rent. So I was basically a week to 10 days behind for two, for the whole two years I basically lived here. And finally got that caught up. I mean, I wasn't even that far behind really. It was just a matter of the end of, of term. That's really what it was about. I was playing with the days more than the month. So, whew. Yeah. Let's see if there's an electric bike right here. See a bike, a share bike situation. So we have a change of plan. Um, there is a place called Canna Stars. Where where is the front? Yeah, we're gonna go here and check it out. And see what that see what that's like and they're dead there's nothing going on in there and uh the security guards so they're open so we'll check that out all right can of stars it's really close and honestly it saved me a good few blocks of walking and uh yeah can of stars lv check them out on instagram um they should have a grand opening at some point next week i think they said next saturday um they should have had their print open this week. First Friday would have been better, but you know, you can only do what you can do. But um, yeah, their prices are a little steep if you're not catching the sale. But I think after this opening becomes major, I think the prices will end up coming down. Um, but hopefully they, they reflect on the prices a little bit. I just got something on sale, basic. So yeah, we have some segways. That was the Segway uh, group from uh, Fremont, uh, off downtown Fremont Street, um, Container Park. They have a uh, Segway tour group that they run out of there. So 
I didn't know they came out here, but those things, I don't trust them. I just don't trust Segways. I mean, it seems a little sketch. Yeah, so, I don't know, any conversations? Let's think. Um, so basically with social media, um, if you are on social media, if you're even hearing my words right now, there's probably somebody close to you, near you, or somebody that you know, just know that it, it's, it's social media for a reason, okay? People wanted their voice. People wanted a voice. They felt censored. So they've been given a vehicle to speak their minds on. But unfortunately, people were not keen on what they truly had to say about things. So it sounded like a bunch of horseshit. But, um, you know, it's, it's the social aspect of media. Like, media is only media until we are allowed to do it. And once we're allowed to do it, then we become our own media. So it's almost like the more that you express yourself on social media, the more you actually have power in at least regulating the narrative that you identify with. And I don't know what everybody's talking about this narrative shit. It's really only one way in looking at things, and that's with the truth, self-awareness. It's only one way. What you see tends to be different, but there's only one way to look at yourself. There's only one way to look at things. It just depends on what you're looking at. And that's the only difference. Like, it's, no, people don't do things because it's good for them. No, they, they're supposed to do things because it reaches the same fundamental standard with each thing that a person believes in. Be your own media. You know, like, there's not enough people having conversations. And hopefully, I'm going to fix that because I got a lot of, I got a lot to say. Like, I don't, if Instagram, if YouTube, can, if it goes down, it's not going to stop the words that I feel. It's not going to stop the insights that I understand. It's not going to stifle anything that I know. All it's, and you know, and the best part about it is, <laughs> I'm already in a place where I don't have to believe anything. I don't have to believe anything. I can know it. I can know it. It doesn't take another person telling me something for me to know something. No, I already know it. It's a matter of me believing the source that it's coming from. And I think belief is just the ability of being, um, what's the word, convinced. Believing is the, it's the ability to be convinced of something external. And, or about yourself, you know, it doesn't really matter. And, and so it's just too many people believing things. And it's like everybody's convincing each other of something. And it's like, I'm not going to convince you anything. I'm going to tell you the truth and hope each ounce of your life runs into these fundamentals of what I'm saying. You know, like, that's all it is. I'm just putting the right information out so that it means something to somebody, that one person, that one person, because we look for too many things from other people that validate us and not even really truly realizing that it's, it's actually separating ourselves from ourselves. I mean, that whole seeking the approval from the outside world is it's like self-sabotage, you know? So. What ifs, you know, like eventually the world will trickle with my words and we'll see how the changes take place. But for now, stay out of your own way. Stay out of your own way because generally the only way you can freaking move forward and move past things is if you're actually separating yourself from yourself for a quick second and enough to be able to get around yourself. Like, people, humans get in their own ways all the time. It's not, it's not, it's not a uh, surprise. So, yeah. That whole bitterness, you know, there's certain jealousy 
lingering around. Like people have been so materialistically driven that apparently jealousy is such an easy, easy feeling to come across you when you in this world. Like it's strange. I didn't. I thought jealousy. I thought nobody was jealous. I thought nobody really gave a shit about anybody. But that's how you see the people who are actually targeting because when you see somebody that can't handle their own life to any degree and you know and, and, and the thing is when you, when I say handle your life I mean in the structure that the framework is built in like get out of high school go to college get married blah 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 like those things are the framework and it's kind of shouldn't be too hard to make that to stabilize that it shouldn't be too hard at all but apparently people make it hard to the point that they try to move against it I've lived in the toughest structure that an American can live in civilian life and other and it's really there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with anything except for how we look at the world. It really is. I wish there were something else. I wish there were a whole 10 step process or a top 10 that, that tells a person um, how to awaken themselves to the truth. And it, it just doesn't exist. Take it with a grain of salt if you want, but you'll regret it. You'll regret taking any words that I say for it with a grain of salt. No, you take my words to heart because that is the only part of you that's going to heal it, hear it on the level that I need it to be heard. So, yeah, I'm going to get walking home and um, maybe I'll pop another video up. I don't know, but we'll see. Just make sure y'all make sure that you do what's important. Make the decision for what's important for what you need to make the decision for. I mean, it's, it's, it's really easy. Everybody needs to quit being selfish. I have a selfish nature just by general nature. Not even conditioning. Not even conformed by society to be selfish. No, I just had a selfish nature when I came out of the It's just me, and I'm telling the world you need to quit being selfish. We need to quit thinking that we are the number one because ultimately we're only number one when there's nobody around. So you do that math.